Go! That's a hit. That hit. This is from, you know what I'm feeling for it. I think it might be on the table. Watch me still suck after all that. Drop a bunch of new snow at her. Awesome. Get on him! Dudes, what do you say we go say hey to 511 Tactical Gear? Been running and gunning with this stuff for a while in the Nothing Fancy project. I think you've seen it a lot. Oh, reviewed some of it like that. And we're going to talk to one of the reps here that's been here a long time, John Christ. Did I say the name right? Correct. Excellent. Sir, you've been here how long with 511? Uh, since the very beginning, back in 99, uh, really, uh, when we incorporated in 2003. Excellent. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how 511 started? Uh, what was the mission statement and where you guys are going right now? Well, we actually started as uh, part of Royal Robbins. This started on as a, an outdoor and travel clothing company, and this was a pant that was designed for Royal himself as a rock climber. And Royal is one of the preeminent rock climbers in the world, and this pant was designed for him. There was the original uh, mantra behind 511, functional, durable, and tactical. And so we worked directly with the end user, as it happened to be an FBI agent discovered this pant and brought the pant back to Quantico, Virginia to the FBI National Academy. And from there it grew out and actually the second item we ever made when we first incorporated 511 was our vest. And that was made specifically for the FBI. This one here? Uh, no, it's our original cotton oh, vest. Oh yeah, the cotton vest. It's kind of like the photographer's vest. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. And so basically every product that you will, will see here was really designed and developed with and by the end user. And that's why so many of our products are, are so functional for the end users because it's exactly what they're asking for. Yeah, cool. We'll give you a 511 background there. Sure. There you go. I had Seymour over there. They're cool too, but we <laughs> want to talk 511 right now. Sure. Interesting. So kind of driven from the end user. Correct. Uh, there was a demand for the pant that came out and then you guys say, hey, you know what? We have a demand well, for this. Well, really what it came down to was, you know, you know, the FBI National Academy is on Quantico, which is a Marine base. And the right. Marines were all wearing your standard BDU and the FBI wanted to look a little bit different than that. And that's how they liked the pant. Again, it was very functional, very durable, had a professional look to it. And from there, again, they said, hey, if you can make that, what else could you make for us? So we made the vest, we made the shirts, and now you were, you were talking about the vest over here. 
and the other part of it is you see like the, the name of Kyle Lamb. Yeah. That most of us at 511 don't come from the law enforcement or military background, and we really like to partner with subject matter experts. In this case, with Kyle Lamb, he, you know, is uh, he's one of these original, been there, done that kind of guys with uh, special forces all around the world. And when you have somebody who's out there as an operator and doing things, he's the kind of guy that can come back to you and say, this is what I need to have to be able to get my job done efficiently and most importantly safely. This worked, this didn't work. Correct, exactly. Yeah. It's, all, it's all field tested. And again, if you, if you want to swing it over here, again, that's, that's, that's where it's all done. Everything, everything we do is lab tested and everything we do passes the lab test, but ultimately it's out in the field in the real world situations is what makes the product what it is. I like your catalog too, because you speak to that concept too, John, about the field testing and getting back to it. You and I off camera were having a discussion as well um, about, uh, you know, and I'm just gonna say there are there is an attitude within this community that, um, you know, that you have to be uber tactical to be useful to the operator, that you have to be very expensive. Maybe there's some makers that say you have to be made in the United States. Have you seen that? You don't have to mention names. Well, I, I think the, the, the key thing in 511 is pretty much every company has a mission statement. And, and a couple of key components in our mission statement is that it has to be functional innovation. A lot of stuff is out there that's innovative, but it's not really functional. And then the second part, to your point of, of, the, of how technical you need to make something, is a key thing is exceptional value. You know, oh, I like so, it. So, sometimes, you know, to the equate, you know, you don't always have to pay for a Mercedes to get the job done. Thank you. And, and that's where, that's where the, the, the exceptional value come, comes into it. Because again, mo most of the people that we're working with are, are not going to retire as millionaires. So they're spending their money to get their job done, and they need to spend every penny that they have as efficiently as possible. That's why I'm a fan, what you just said, is you're getting, and my review, let's just take my review, you see sure. an annotation there, 511 Tactical Vest. Uh, in my opening sidebar, I said, if you're looking to impress your friends, you know, your airsoft buddy or something, that might not be the vest you want. Why? Because it just works. It's streamlined, it's cost effective, it works. I know because I've used it. You guys have seen me wear it. Um, and I love that philosophy. So let's make it work, let's make it affordable for the end user, whoever that is, and pretty much everything I see coming out of the 511 line falls in line with that. Let's take these pouches, for instance. By the way, these pouches are pretty awesome, and I do like your slick stick system right. of how it attaches. It's easy. It adds a little bit of weight, to be honest. Right. We're always keeping it real. Right. It does, but it's fast, and it's way, an easy way to reconfigure your vest. Uh, and by the way, your plate carrier rocks, too. Well, that's and then when you're talking about the slick system, that's the biggest issue we heard from operators was, hey, as our mission changes, we want to be able to change what we're carrying. And the, the old system wasn't very functional to do that. That's where we started saying, well, what doesn't work? And that's where literally, again, going back to the end user, what what is going to make it so that your job is easier to get done? And there you have it, the slick stick system 511. Works good. Um, I think your brown is a little bit browny. Oh, you're, I, it's a little different coyote brown than everyone right. else's use. Right. I wish it was just a little bit lighter. That's okay. just a minor, sure. minor pet peeve of mine. Well, and, and it's interesting you say that. We we uh, get somewhere between 300 and 400 phone calls and emails a week yeah. from end users, and they all pretty much start off with, I love you, but. There's always something. But for us, well, that's where we actually get very excited, is yeah, you're taking your totally. valuable time to let us know how we can become a better manufacturer to you. You know, if you made that pocket an inch bigger, I could do this. If yeah. you moved it over here, I could get this done. You know, you know little things like you see the wear spots on, on, on the pant, that reinforcement, that wasn't something that we came up with. That was the end user going, hey, you know, my pants wearing out oh. right here, what can I do? Well, kind of like this, yeah, exactly. also wearing the 511 TAC Light Pro Pants, nothing fancy, and you can see exactly what he's talking about, the reinforced pocket, which I covered in the review of the pants, you'll see in an annotation. And that, that was end user driven. That was, end that user was saying, somebody yeah. saying, hey, I love your pants, but, and we said, what? Well, we can fix that. This pant, when it started off, had 37 bar tacks. This pant is now up to 59 bar tacks. And what, what, what ex are you wearing TAC Light Pros? Uh, yeah, I am. Okay, so, same. You're wearing exactly yep. same well, my, pant. My, my, I am, must dude. be a little bit older than you. Look at that. <laughs> the color's the same almost. Mine are in coyote, yours are in tan, I think. Yep. This is the one of the top 
pants out there. You right. want to talk pants? I, I was right. an LLB field tester forever, okay. and I'm into clothing as well. Right. But look at my review on that, and I go line by line why I like right. the pant. It's the yeah. stuff you're saying right here, John, and the cell phone pocket, right. dedicated knife pocket. Oh, Spider Co. Barong sitting in there. <laughs> awesome. You got squared away cargo pockets. Uh, you know, you have, I believe you have a button holes to be able to blouse them. Yes, and I forgot to mention that in my review. Right. I annotate it later. You right. can blouse them if you right. want. And Directing it won't user. break the bank. Wait, did you know that you could put knee pads in these? Yeah, through my viewers, I found out because right. I missed that in my review. Well, and the guys come back and said, just like you, my great TMPers come back and say, hey, dude, great review. Don't forget, you can put knee knee pads in the 511 Tack Light Pro. So, well, again, it just it's awesome for direct, 40 bucks or less right. if you shop around. Directly from an end user, we had a product development meeting. Had a couple of guys who were range masters came out and said, hey, you have that double knee. In there, we actually turned the pant inside out, cut the slit in there, went out, cut some neoprene, and shoved it inside of there. So when we go out on the range and you go down to your knee, you're not getting that little pebble on your knee, you're not getting the shell case right. on the knee. And we said, Do you mind if we borrow that idea? And now all the pants come with a slot permanently in there, slotted and, double knee, and you can uh, go out and buy the knee pad again, direct user. Awesome, you know, feedback on how yeah. to make the product better. Awesome. Uh, how about marketing? I find that I'm having a hard time, my viewers are having a little bit of a hard time finding outlets to buy let's say the tack like pro pants right. I would like to see a, a, a wider distribution channel of 511 gear well the, 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 the biggest thing for, for us because we are so focused on law enforcement and public safety true you, you, you know that it's one of those catch 22s you, you like to have a brand that the officers feel comfortable in wearing both on duty and off duty and it's one of those things, if you become too big of known of a brand, then all of a sudden your core audience is the guys that made you what they are. They're going to say, stupid they, they, brand, I don't want it anymore. Well, they can't wear it because you, 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 when cops get off duty, they don't go around with bumper stickers saying, I'm a cop. They don't go off duty say, with shirts saying, I'm a cop. When they go off duty, they don't want anybody to know who they are. So you right. have to be very careful. But you have to be loyal to those. They're, they're, they're who, they're who, it's a good answer. They're, they're, they're what made us, so we need to be loyal to them and make sure that we have a product that they continue to, to be able to wear and to support. Okay, and just so you know, there is a high percentage of my audience which are just that. Right. They are cops or SWAT officers, federal officers, state, right. local, lots of military guys are watching this, and uh, that's who you're serving. You know what I'd love to see, and I don't know if this would dilute your law enforcement association, which you're talking about. I would love to see this put in the BX's, PX's around the world. We, we are working with, with, with AFIs quite, quite a yeah, bit on that. Good to hear. Getting that, that extent. And it, for us, it's always interesting of how many contractors are coming into the PXs before they deploy. And that's really because we don't, we're, we're not, yes. most of our product is not very compliant. So a lot of your, you know, the vast majority of your military guys don't wear our stuff, not because they don't want to, but, but just that's not what is what issued. And when you say contracts, you're talking about PMCs, right? right. Professional military right. contractors out there right. taking rounds, giving right. rounds, and right. they need to be equipped to the same right. level. Exactly. Okay, just clarifying that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so well, that's good. You're making uh, making inroads in that. Right. Real quick, and there, you know, surprisingly, I was looking at this booth, and it's not one of the biggest booths that shot, but I'm like, there's probably a lot to talk about here, right. just like ever, because when you get in the details, there's a lot to talk about. For instance, look at this holster. I have not seen this before. This is an LBE holster by 511, horizontal in nature, just like that TAC Force one that I've been using and actually loving. This is the same one. And John, you said you're coming out with a light compatible version one of that? Correct. Okay. We're going to be working on a, a number one. And again, you can see, you can either put it like on the vest that you had reviewed. Uh -huh. You can go ahead, you can put it down, down on a thigh rig if you this want. This is a cool thigh rig, by the way. That's in the project being reviewed. And again, you can field see, tested. I guess she doesn't. Oh, so you can go vertical or horizontal with that Correct. thing. Correct. Uh, my favorite, though, and this is, <laughs> I'm giving you so many data points, you might want to <laughs> get your notepad out, is this. If you can make a version to the 45, sure. that freaking rocks. Well, that's okay? one of the things, is it, everybody is working on that, that swivel the pivot. At, at, attachment. Okay. You, you know, it, it's interesting. If you look at what I'm carrying here is we uh -huh. have our patented backup belt system. And it's a Velcro, it's a Velcro system. And the nice thing about Velcro is you can put it exactly where you want it, whatever angle you want it, move it up a millimeter, move okay. it down a millimeter. The, the reason operators don't like Velcro 
is it is not in a permanent attachment. So when they're going through a window, going through a tight space, there is a chance that this could come off. Off comes the gun. Whereas with the Molly system, the reason everybody likes it is if you put it on here, it's not coming off. Amen, brother. And that's, Amen. And that's always the trade-off of being able to position exactly the way you want versus having security. Because you know the last thing you want to do is be going through a window and something comes off because inevitably that's the thing you're going to need 50 feet in. Amen. Good point, but you might be looking at that pivot capability, we, we right? Are, we, we are, but okay. it, and that's where it comes back to now, whenever you start putting pivots and things, now now you're adding complexity, which, yep. you know, Weight, bulk. Well, but it, but it's also confidence. You, you, you know, you, we've all had pivots yeah. that break because they catch, and now all of a sudden you have, it's the same thing with, with the Velcro. You, yeah, yeah. you know, sometimes I'd rather have it go this way and never, never fall off. Yeah. As opposed to have it go this way Amen. With, with the chance that it could fall. One of the things I talk about with holsters is consistency of placement. In other words, if I put it on my belt, I put it on my LBE, it's got to stay put. Correct. Because it's a training issue. If I go down and access a pistol that, oh, by the way, it just shifted six inches back, Correct. that's what you're talking Correct. about. Exactly. It's, it's actually a life or death issue Correct. for an well, you don't a dude. Be like Yeah, oh, where is it now? Right. Uh, you could do that, though. I mean, just sew it at a 45. If Correct. you wanted. Correct. Also, while I'm here, if you came out with camo patterns, we, ACU, multicam, I know some licensing comes into play there. Uh, and again, that goes back to our, our mission statement, is if we if we use something oh, like multicam, we're not going to be able to deliver the exceptional value. Okay. And again, it's not functional innovation. Multicam exists, so it doesn't meet our criterion. We're not delivering innovation because we're taking something that's already done. I like it. That's yep. a great answer that you deviate from your commitment to value. Because right. anything I see with multicam, like the true spec guys are right over here. Right. They have some great stuff, but if you take a true spec set of BDUs, which are Coyote Tan, and I can get them for 40 bucks a piece, you throw a multicam in there, it just almost doubled the price. Right. Correct. Is that because of licensing? Correct. Okay, so that was an excellent answer. There's some slings by 511. I don't know much about those yet. Uh, maybe one day we'll wheel and deal on those and I'll get back to you. Well, if you have an, an opportunity to come back, Kyle, who from VTAC, will be here and he can demo the slings for you. I mean, they're, they're his slings. I mean, that's really, really where Kyle first got into. I'll show Kyle how to use the slings. I'll tell me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The guy would own me. <laughs> that's the tactical guru I talk about, guys. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, uh, I actually, I, I like the input. I know you have yeah. various uh, experts that are rolled right. in the 511 right. line. Your knives, for instance, Gar Garani, what's his he's name? Garani. Garani. I like what he has to say. Yeah. I think he's a squared away dude. Uh, well, I've looked yeah, at some for, of his stuff. For him, he doesn't, he doesn't call it a knife. It's an edge tool. Yeah. Because, and that's really, really again, enough. it goes back to the, the versatility of, of the product. You, you know, when, when, when you're out there, and you've got something to do, you're gonna use whatever you have in your possession. So Amen. that's why it becomes a tool. You get desperate enough, uh, it might be a big pin that day. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, these are cool. These bags, by the way, I like these. I haven't evaluated them. Although I will say this, here's another data point. You ready? Here. Got your notepad ready? Yep. <laughs> Too heavy. Bomb proof, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely bomb proof. But what I'm getting here at SHOT going booth to booth is um, the message from DOD, get them coming back from Afghanistan, Iraq, is lighten the load, dude. Well, it's, it's interesting. I was telling you to begin with, we started off as Royal Robins outdoor travel clothing. And, and I personally do a lot of hiking and everything. Yeah. And the first thing you ask anybody, how much does the boot weigh? How much does the bag weigh? How much exactly. does that weigh? It's a big in deal. The, in the outdoor world, you will pay a premium price to cut ounces. We don't yet hear that as much on the law enforcement or the military thing. But to your point, the guys after rucking an 80 pound sack, you know, in 100 degree weather, all of a sudden it's like, well, what would I feel like if I only rucked 60? Yep. And now, and so you're, you're starting to see more and more of that, hey, how much does that weigh? I mean, I, and I always laugh when I was at Royal Rock, everything they asked me, how much does it weigh? How much does it weigh? How much does it weigh? Right. And in this business, on this side of it, we never hear law enforcement ever asking, how much does that weigh? I think that's going to change, like we're talking Correct. right now. Correct. And for instance, is a thousand cord, uh, Cordura, uh, Denier Cordura, great pack, bulletproof, no doubt. 
but if we manufacture that, like I've seen in some other booths, right. um, the ripstop, super high quality polyurethane coated ripstop right. nylon, we just lighten it up by 12 ounces or so. Right. Just so. Okay. And I like to see it from 511 because you guys don't rip off your buyers. Right. Well, but again, that's why we have our product development meetings is getting that input from, from the end user. Yeah. What, you know, where, where do we need to go? What do we need to do? You talked about the tack light. Started off as an eight and a half ounce cotton. It is now a seven ounce cotton polyester blend. And by the way, that's one of the main reasons I love the pant because it has that polyester. Here I go, I know, I'm getting carried away. I'm getting excited. But it gets wet, it doesn't stay wet, it dries off, it wears like iron. It's Correct. pretty color fast Correct. for what it is, unlike 100% cotton. Correct. I'm with you, dude. I am so with you, it's not even funny. Uh, let's show them those uh, bags, because those sure. are some really cool bags. They come in different colors. Is that available? I know the black is here. Right. I've seen it in OD. Here's an OD, right. that'll right. film better, because you can see it better. Guys, these are awesome gear bags. These 511 gear bags are uh, the bomb, the bomb. And here, I am this POU as a, a, a high use gear bag. Sorry if I'm stealing your thunder, dude. Uh, but they need to wear good because this is like a luggage bag that may be thrown, abused in different right. situations. Right. So maybe a lighter weight fabric would not be smart in that situation. Well, what we find is when the guys gear out, they take a lot of weight. And again, going back to the feedback, when we first manufactured this bag, yeah. the wheels were much smaller than this mm -hmm. and they were breaking. So we did 100% recall on the product, beefed up the wheels, we beefed up the whole back end again based on the, the, the feedback from, from, from the end users to make it what you were saying, it's a bomb proof bag, it's not, you're not going to have any issues with it. Nice solid, uh, is that polyurethane on Correct. the bottom? But again, going back to the end user, again this is still a soft side bag so if you're putting something here like if you're in a SWAT team and you have a helmet with a visor, those type of things, you right. still have a possibility of having that, that crushed. So that's where we started coming out with these bags. The really nice thing on these. So you're transitioning to a different bag. Is this right. bag and this bag different? Yes, they are. Okay. Th this is called the uh, Soames bag. And this one on the bottom that was called, is called what? The Mission Rolling Duffel. Mission Rolling Duffel on the bottom. Soames bag. Soames. S O M S. Okay, cool. So now you have rigid stays on here. So now when you take this like bag. It. It will stand on end, like no it. problem. It will lay down. Like what it. really is nice about it is you can now stack bags on top of each other. Wicked. So if you are putting your, your body armor in here, your helmet yeah. in here, if the next guy puts his bag on top of it, you're not gonna end up with your, your face plate getting crushed. Love it. In, or, or more importantly, your bag of Lay's potato chips. Exactly. I mean, face plates, the department will buy me another one, but dude, potato chips, you're replaceable in the field. I'm just saying. Yeah. And then I'm kidding, for, kidding. For, for organization, you have a movable baffle that will go yeah. in here. You have our patented backup belt system on the side, as well as uh, the the Molly. So again, you can organize all the gear on the inside of this. Okay, now this frame too, John. You say it can take a vertical load, right? Correct. Cool. And it looks like it's made out of fiberglass. Are, are those fiberglass rods, because uh, I am a power kiter, and we use those in Correct. those uh, kites, also carbon fiber. Excellent. And your cost on this, uh, what's your list on it? This one is uh, $199.99. Okay. Uh, and you, you might be able to find it for less at certain Correct. places. Correct. That's just the list on it. Correct. Also, look at the inside of the pouches. Uh, is it this one? The light color that you can see stuff. I do like that. Right. Spec Ops does that too, which I think is cool. It's a cool feature. So this is, this is the, the daddy of all bags. This one we call the, uh, the, the CAMS bag. So now you still have the same... You might be seeing this bag in a different form in the future. Just remember I said that. <laughs> so oh, again, look at that. There's that lightweight interior, you, 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 that light colored You can interior. see the, the baffles and everything in here still has the, the, the rigid. Yeah, love again, it. Going back and directly talking to the end user, this bag fits perfectly into the trunk of a Crown Vic. So really? Again, understanding where, where and how the operator needs to place this. But the biggest thing when we were talking to the operators is they said, we want to have a place that when we deploy, we can take our long guns with us. So now you come down to this bottom compartment, you zip this open, it's rigid on all sides, rigid on the top, you can fit a full-size AR in the bottom of this bag. I like it. So I like we, it. We have our we have our 36-inch gun case, gun, our 36-inch gun case secures yep. in here perfectly. Now, uh, very perceptive viewers watching this will go, that is an awesome system. However, what's going to carry that weight is this zipper. 
That is a true statement, but look at the heavy duty YKK zipper that 511 uses. Actually, you use it on pretty much all Everything. your gear. Everything. And that is a great zipper, I know, because I've used it myself. I've used, field tested it for like a lot. And then also fast text buckles will help alleviate that load Correct. as we load up the guns or whatever. So right. they've done some thought to it. And, that, and this isn't the only bag. I know 511 this is a great bag. There's a lot of other great bags out there too. Uh, I like it. And the cost on this is going to be a little bit more? Uh, 269 is the list. Okay, cool. Uh, colors that that comes in. OD black? Black. Black and black and black. You have it in any color you want as long as it's black. Exactly. <laughs> Well, if you, if you want, you know, sometimes we, we do like to have fun at 511. I told you this was the uh, CAMS bag, and this is the SOMES bag. Right. Can you, can you guess what CAM stands for? <laughs> I want to let you uh, go ahead with this joke, because I have this no is, idea. This uh, is carry all my shit. <laughs> okay. And this is the SOMES bag. Some of my shit. There you go. I like it. Is, and that's where, the, seriously, the name's from? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> because when the operators were saying that's they, good, they, I love they wanted, it. They wanted to have a bag to yeah. put all their shit. Totally, I I love that color. By the yeah. way, that the, your OD is just it's awesome. It's it's versatile. It, it blends in at least in the Western U.S. where I've done right. my run and gun, and it's actually yeah. a really nice color. By the way, your pistol case, awesome. That's right, I sang it. Deal with it. This is a great pistol case, and it won't break the bank. Right. You know, I think it's around 20 bucks. Is right. your list on that? 19.99. 19.99 for a 511 Tactical Series field tested by VTAC Tactical Case, and it's awesome. Um, so great job. Anything else you want to talk about, John? In the 511? Oh, let me mention this. Someone's pulling them away already. Oh, that's not it. I was going to show them the BDU belt. I showed them the TDU. Them yeah, the TDU belt. That's right. There it is. That is a great belt. They're shutting the lights off on us in here. I, I wish this thing went till 10 o'clock. That's a great belt. Yeah. Uh, and I loved how you included it free for last Correct. year Correct. in the, this belt right here in the TAC Light Pro Pants. Yes. What a great deal that was. That was high value. Right. Well, that, again, it goes back to the mission statement, providing Thank you. exceptional value. Yeah. I hope you guys do more of that. Uh, and I like that for my viewers. Right. And in fact, I know it probably wouldn't work out, but if we could give a discount to my viewers at 511, I know you have a dealer network and right. cop shops you deal right. with, and I'm finding out it's just really hard to do without offending the dealer network. Right. Um, well, one of the things that we like to do is we, we do a lot of uh, coupons, so you'll see in some of the national uh, uh, publications, you'll see some coupons coming out for our Light for Life, so you can get uh, $20 uh, off the Light for Life. So again, driving that value back into the end user. Yeah, love it. I mean, what other tactical supplier does what does that? In other words, they give you something free. I guess there's some others out there. There's right. so many good people right. making stuff. Correct. Right. But I like it. I like. Um, and then I haven't even talked about your clothing stuff. I really haven't tested your tops too much or right. this. Um, maybe one day. I, I can't really right. talk with authority on that right. subject yet. Um, but I do like that high polyester content of all your fabrics. I right. think it rocks. Correct. Right. Cool. Do uh, you got your knives out here? Sure. Just real quick, we'll look at them. The light's getting shut off in the SHOT Show. We'll probably have armed guards escort me out here in about two the, seconds. Is it key up here? I think their knives are pretty affordable as well. There's a lot you don't have in the case though, right? Well, we, we have a whole new line of knives. So if you've seen some of our knives in the past, we have, uh, we have moved it and gotten some different knives now. Yeah, this is a completely different yeah, design. So we're doing uh, some fixed blade knives. Blade tech? Well, again, that goes back to our, our partnership. You, you oh, go I back, didn't know you guys were using blade yeah, tech. Yeah, we, you go back to our partnership. You go you go to the experts and work with the experts. Just yeah, like we work I've reviewed with, with a blade Kyle, tech or two. Kyle Lamb, we work with a blade tech book on the knives as well as our uh, dry Excellent. And what's, uh, oh, there it is right there. Scout folder, OS 8 blade. 511. I kind of like the looks of that, and it looks like you can go tip up. Sorry, guys, tip up, tip down on that. Correct. Left handed, right handed, so you can move, you know, you can place the clip wherever you like. Well, see, then I've reviewed some blade techs. I'm a big knife reviewer, right. too. Um, one thing, I don't like the scales on this, those are right. really slick. And blade, that's blade tech. Blade right. tech makes those. Uh, I'd really like to see that slicked up a little bit. I'll, I don't mind the blade shape on that, yeah. though. The price is definitely good. Forty-four dollars, and that's Correct. list on the Correct. scout folder. Blade does do some good value. Correct. Good, kind of well, dovetailing well, what you're saying. Well, but it, but again, what it goes back 
to is they, they, their locking mechanism on those is phenomenal. I mean, that's one of the things that they, they, they do as well, if not better than anybody, is their locking mechanism. That over time, their locking mechanism actually gets stronger by just by the way that they've engineered that. Cool. Right on. Well, any last words, John? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, big fans uh, in the Nut and Fancy Project of what you do at 511 for everything we just talked about. Perfect. Keep it up. We look forward to reviewing more of your gear. All right. And I'm not associated with you in any way, am I? Not that I'm aware of. Did you pay me today? I hope not. Not a dime. <laughs> I might have your wallet, but you wouldn't have known about that. <laughs> Thanks, I bro. I'll give you a hat if you want. <laughs> All right. Nut and Fancy sign off at the 511 booth as the lights get shut off as the show winds down. SHOT Show 2010. Thanks for the support, guys, and thanks to all the cops and Leos out there that support 511 too. Out. Owning this thing. <laughs> Sounds on it. He runs slow. <laughs>